Welcome back to another Camper Build Series video. Thanks for being here. In this video, I will be installing the interior walls of the camper, painting the floor, and installing the insulation on the roof. If you find this video valuable or want to see more of this build series, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments below. Before getting started on installing the interior panels, I need to install a few extra roof supports. These supports will provide a solid place to install my roof fan and will give me plenty of space to mount the interior panels. After that, I begin prepping my floor for a protective layer of paint. While painting the floor is not completely necessary, since it will be covered by the mattress, I prefer to cover the floor with a couple of layers of Kills Anti-Mildew and Anti-Mold Primer. The bottom of the mattress won't get any ventilation and at times may have some moisture buildup from condensation in the camper. A couple of times each year I take out the mattress and let it air out for a day or two, but the Kills Primer gives me a little bit of peace of mind for the times when I may not be able to air it out for a couple of months. I prefer doing this step before installing my side panels just to make sure I can get good paint coverage in the corners without getting paint all over the panels. Before installing the interior panels, I also need to cut holes for my side vents. Ventilation is extremely important in a small camper like this. It will protect your camper from too much buildup of condensation and will also protect you from potentially suffocating from lack of oxygen. I use a 3 inch hole saw to punch out the holes for the vents. For this next step, you'll want to make sure you have good eye protection and a good mask. Long sleeves and gloves would also be very helpful. I'm not always the best at using my PPE, but I always look back and wish I had been better about it. We are going to be using FRP panels for our interior walls. FRP stands for Fiber Reinforced Panels. They are often made with glass fiber, which is why protective equipment would be important as we cut through the panels and create fiberglass dust in our workspace. I really like this stuff because it is a breeze to clean and really tough. Here, I measure and cut the panel for the front of the camper. I use my circular saw set to a minimal depth while lifting the panel off the floor slightly with some scrap plywood. After working this day, my arms and hands were extra itchy, which is where some long sleeves and gloves would have been real nice. To install the panel, I first put down a good layer of construction glue on each wooden support and along each panel of insulation. I used the cheapest bottle of liquid nails that I can find. After pressing the panel into place, I use a small firm paint roller to push the panel into the glue and make sure that it is tight against the wooden supports. I'll be using white quarter inch nylon rivets to permanently hold the panels into place. So I mark out where I want each rivet to go and drill the quarter inch hole for each one. Once the holes are drilled, you simply insert the rivet and lightly hammer the center shaft to lock the rivet into place. When marking out your rivet locations, make sure to leave enough room for your corner trim. My trim is 3 quarter inch, so I make sure that the edge of the rivet is at least that far from the corner. Before adding my wall and roof panels, I realized that I needed to add in a few more supports on the roof to attach the ceiling panels in the corners. I then cut and install the ceiling panels. I 
have to rig up a handful of clamps in order to hold up the panels while I fasten them with glue and the rivets. An extra set of hands here would have been very helpful. Cutting the wall panels was one of the trickiest parts of today's project. To make a precise cut of the wall panel, I created a form with a few pieces of scrap plywood. I screwed together the pieces of plywood in the shape of the front notch of the camper, and then used that form to mark my cuts on the FRP board before cutting it. By laying the form directly onto the panel, I was able to make a perfect cut of the wall panel to fit into the camper. The installation of the sidewall panels is the same as the front wall and the ceiling. This time, I just have to drill a couple of holes for the light switches. I go through later and use my router to cut out the hole for my doors.
Before installing my roof insulation, I need to install and wire my ceiling lights. These lights are different than the ones I've used in the past. These are small can lights, and I think they look a lot nicer. If you are interested in the method I use to wire up my electrical, you can see my last video in the series. I'll provide a link in the description and a pop-up link in the corner of this video. I'm really happy with how the interior walls turned out. I'm not sure there's a better material that you could use for the interior walls of an off-roading camper. As you can see, there are some gaps around the edges where different panels meet up, but they will all be covered by the trim installed in a future video. To finish up today's project, I just need to install the ceiling insulation. I used garage door insulation foam panels. It is cheap and easy to work with. For the insulation of the rear of the camper, I use a few scraps of foil-backed insulation that I had lying around. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you found the information helpful. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. Our channel continues to grow. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. We'll see you in the next one.